Okay guys, fourth part and the second part of texturing the chassis of my hot rod. Um, I've turned it back onto self-illumination. At the end of the previous video, the, uh, the shading and everything was on. But I'm turning it back onto self-illumination because I think it's an important way to, to texture. Because you can just judge your texture apart from normal maps, everything fancy. If it looks good without all those fancy effects, it's going to look good with all of them on. It's going to look even better. It's going to look absolutely amazing. <laughs> So, uh, that being said, um, we're going to continue. Um, I left off in the previous video while I was painting some small speckled dirt. And, uh, and I'm actually continuing that. I'm just painting some more uh, dirt all over my texture here. I'm trying to use the ambient occlusion as guide to paint this uh, dirt. And I'll be honest, this can get a little bit uh, boring when texturing. because, you ha Especially on this texture, I have so much to cover. So much places that dirt should be painted. But... Uh, Right, has to be done. So, and uh, one thing you should try to do is, uh, if if two areas will be textured the same, then you should just have them share texture space. I have tons and tons of texture space shared here. There's, I think, if I if I have to estimate, I think 60, 70 percent of the texture space here is uh, is shared since a lot of my cars are symmetrical. Uh, parts like the spikes on the front are uh, the same. Um, there are only very few unique parts on my texture, so that means that I'm already saving a lot of work by not having to redo um, a lot of textures. So I'm back to my uh, my cloudy big dirt, painting some more. I want to put some uh, some special, especially put some care on the the exhausts. Um, always keeping that in mind. The exhausts are something that is uh, scorched with heat because of the uh, the hot fumes coming out of the engine. So I'm going to have to put some special care into that later. But right now I'm just doing general dirt all over the place. Um, some big cloudy dirt to, to break up even solid surfaces. So just the same process all over. And again, these are E3D brushes. I really like these. Um, they're great to work with. There are just so many, so you're bound to find something you like in there. I'm changing the opacity of these layers a little bit because I think subtlety is key and also I'm going to add a lot of dirt layers so if I would leave all of them at 100% opacity it might be a little bit too much. Also at the other side of the engine you might see that the mirroring of the dirt is, is obvious. Uh, I know I, maybe I should fix that but then again I'm probably never even going to show the underside of my car. Uh, I'm just texturing for the um, what if case that what if this got into a game and what if the player managed to flip the car he might get to see the underside for a few seconds so so I'm painting this this uh, this big cloudy dirt in a, in a way that is supposed to look like um, smudgy oily uh, machine surfaces Yeah, and one thing, more visible area is um, the back of that beam of the frame. There was some obvious mirroring there, and I just fixed it by erasing it a little bit. So where it matters, I'm actually erasing. Where I don't think it's worth my time, I'm just leaving it like that. Uh, if you want to get a really, really perfect texture, then you might want to do that. Like fix it on the areas, uh, fix it everywhere. So I'm creating a new layer here, exhaust black. And uh, this layer will be where I do um, the the special um, blackening on the exhausts, especially at the tips where where the the smoke um, comes out. I uh, want to make it really clear that these exhausts uh, are are, um, are spitting out smoke from a really powerful uh, gas guzzling <laughs> polluting engine. <laughs> So uh, painting this black, and just want to see what that what that's going to give here. Yeah, yeah, that's starting to look okay. I think we're going to have to add a little bit more. Oh, and I can see some. Um, it's a bit of a problem with the dirt I painted around the the seams of the uh, of the two exhaust parts. 
you could tell that that uh, there was a little seam there. And like I said before, I don't believe in crazy solutions for fixing seams. All I did here was use a little bit of the eraser, and the seam disappeared again. That being said, if you would have crazy patterns running over this, then yeah, you might need some some uh, intricate solutions. But for most things, it's not really necessary. So here's another uh, little trick I like doing. I don't know where I got this. I think from some tutorial I read back in the days when I just started to learn how to texture is um, use a, a one or two pixel brush, set it to a light gray or even white, and I created a new layer here, scratches. And I'm just painting small scratch strokes in, uh, in places and directions which I think will get some scoring and scratching from uh, rocks kicking up from the ground uh, by the wheels that um, hit, the, hit the car, hit the frame. Uh, it's a frame I'm doing right here, and that would just um, scratch it and tear uh, small parts of paint off. So um, my flow is at 32%. Don't really want to be doing this at um, at 100%. It would just stand out too much. And I'm only doing it on places that it will make sense for uh, to get hit by little rocks. So so mostly the underside, a little bit on the engine, but mostly on the frame. Uh, and the exhaust too, of course, because well, they sit, they sit close to the ground. Um, they're really in the open, so uh, kicked up uh, rocks and, and gravel might hit it. It's just important that that's one of the things that's difficult is to just think how the uh, how the dirt and uh, the wear will affect this object. Ambient occlusion helps you, but yeah, some, some things you just have to have to imagine yourself how it'll work. A few on the fuel tank. You never know. Not all of them are scratches from kicked up, uh, kicked up dirt. Some of them might just be from I don't know. Uh, a character sitting on it, and his jeans has uh, these uh, metal pins in it, and it might have scratched the car. Whatever. Um, the frame just, the frame of the bottom parts will just tend to have more because of uh, road contact and that sort of stuff. So these spikes, they will definitely catch uh, a lot of scratches. That's why I'm really uh, putting a lot of them there. And um, the reason I'm also doing these scratches is with, with the dirt, I'm always darkening things. I'm always, I'm always making it darker, uh, making it... And, and the scratches contrast that. They make things lighter, so you get um, a contrast in the, the visual noise that you're adding. And uh, uh, just adding some more all over. And on this red, I have to watch out that the contrast doesn't become too high, that I don't push too hard on my uh, my tablet pen. This part's really uh, this part really sits out in the open also, so I can use some more scratches there. I'm just judging what it looks like. Saving it again. I thought they should be a little bit more subtle, so that's what I did. I'm turning off self illumination again just to see what it looks like with shading. Because it might need a little bit of a contrast boost again, then. Uh, So I'm turning on the unwrap modifier because I want to find a want to find out where these parts are sitting, and also I want to rotate these 
because you see the ambient occlusion is messing up a little bit here uh, these parts share the same texture space but um, their ambient occlusion should be different so I might have to change that painting some more dirt it's a really cloudy one again Yeah, I'm thinking that the um, the drive axle, uh, drive axle. I'm sorry, <laughs> the uh, drive axle is going to be really smudgy and dirty. Um, I'm thinking about when you see the underside of uh, of a truck or something. It's always really smudgy, dirty parts. I'm trying to find the right brush. I'm just picking a few. I mean, you get variation in dirt there. It's not a real thought behind picking these brushes. I want the cloudy ones, I want the speckly ones. So just looking at it from all angles. And just think about it, I'm, I'm still keeping this really subtle. Um, I see the process of adding dirt is one of the most important things in this texture and I really want to get it down nice and that means I'm gonna to have to take my time for it um, oh yeah here's another one I'm creating this this brush I really like to use uh, uses one of the basic uh, Photoshop brushes and what it does is great for, for adding these uh, these chipped scratch type of things uh, like when you have the chip paint see uh, I just sort of wriggle it a little bit and it really looks like the, the paint's chipped off and the paint is, is removed and it's uh, it's a worn surface. Um, so just look at that um, that previous part in slow motion again or just pause it if you want to see my exact settings for that brush. Um, I put it in here just so you, so you guys can see and if you just rail it around change the uh, the pressure you put on your tablet um, change the direction a little bit but still place it in some uh, sort of logical positions like the the outsides of um, of an object the the edges where the paint will chip away it's uh, it's gonna look better like that so the this is the rear differential it's painted red so the paint actually chips away and will wear away and that's why I'm adding these uh, sort of chip paint uh, things here also notice how I'm doing this I'm not painting this with gray I'm painting on the mask of the red paint so just look at that um, yeah I removed it here I'm changing the saturation of this layer a little bit but I'm painting on the mask which means I'm removing I'm actually removing the paint and showing the layer underneath it again so I created a clipping mask here a clipping mask means that this uh, adjustment layer will only affect the layer below it and uh, what I'm doing now is I'm using a uh, the same brush again to paint um, to paint the wear of the actual paint. The paint will discolor in some places, but it won't discolor evenly everywhere. So I'm using a hue saturation adjustment layer to paint desaturation in certain locations. It's a really important part of a, a non-destructive workflow. Okay, so I think uh, that back part is okay for now. I'm just gonna jump over to uh, to another part. That doesn't mean it's done yet. I just tend to jump around and not focus on one part too much. Yeah, I think that the the, um, the texture sharing is too obvious on these parts in the front. So I'm mirroring them. Uh, that way you get a little bit more variation in there. The left and right ones are. I have the same mirroring but the center one is mirrored so it looks different from the uh, the other two my exhaust colors I want to remove reduce the saturation a little bit there I think the blue was a bit too much saving it as a TGA again yeah it goes a little bit more desaturated makes it a lot more subtly effect you might even say oh why bother but oh, I still think it's important to have some slight variations just to show that it's a sort of different uh, it's a different metal than the actual engines made out of
Okay, so I'm just looking at it from all angles. Trying to find some more places that need adjusting. You might be bothered a little bit, by the way, I'm twirling around this model a lot. Um, I know I am a little bit looking at these videos again, but uh, then again, it's sped up, and it's also something something important. It's 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 the the times when I'm working when I'm really thinking, what do I have to change? Does this look good? Um, do I need to work on this, etc. So it's important you do that. Yeah, one thing I, I didn't do. Um, I talked about using the the pattern layer in the previous uh, video. I have to add that to the uh, the normal map also because it's gonna look cooler. So. Uh, creating the pattern as a normal map, deleting the rest. I'm gonna yeah. Apparently, average RGB. I'm thinking this the, the colors of this normal map look kind of strange, but. Well, whatever. <laughs> I just believe the filter. I'm used that my normal maps look a little bit more colorful, but not much I can do about that. So uh, I did the normal map blend operation again. I'm gonna do it again now. Since apparently my action is gone, I have no clue why that happened. I record it, but it disappears. I keep telling you, Photoshop loses that sort of stuff all the time. Okay, so it looks good on the normal maps. Makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. Okay, I'm just you passing a little bit on it because it was too obvious and I'm gonna go back to my diffuse and duplicate it and what I'm gonna do now is and this might go in a little bit against what I said in the previous video I'm going to start creating my specular map uh, straight away um, just because I want to see the the intermediate results of, uh, of things I'm by no means done with the diffuse yet but I want to work on on both at the uh, at the same time. So since this is painted metal, um, I'm changing. I'm having some color in my specular map, reducing the saturation a little bit. But I want the specular to be slightly slightly red uh, in color there. Same for the blower valve, slightly r red orangish, maybe even towards yellow. The blower belt pattern doesn't really matter. Blower belt needs a little bit more specular just so it becomes obvious. The fuel tank needs to be a lot brighter and it needs more saturation. So I have some a bit more yellow specular in there. The exhausts need to be really, really shiny, so I'm making them white. And again, see, I'm going over every layer here and just changing them towards what I think should be the correct specular values. That's how I go at my specular maps. So parts might be really dark in color, but that doesn't mean that I want them to have a bright specular, like the dark metal parts. They need just as much specular as, um, as the other, uh, other parts. So just changing saturation and on the colored parts, uh, I'm, I keep thinking, would I want colored specular on this? And um, usually for metal type of things, I want colored specular, but for organic type of things, like I'm thinking about wood, leather, uh, which we will be texturing later, I choose different colors, but I'll talk about that later. So I'm adding a sponge here. And why am I doing this sponge? Because I want more contrast in my specular. I'm 
I'm going to save it as a specular TGA and we're going to set it up and just have a look at what it does. Set the active lights to 2. And straight away I'm thinking it doesn't really have enough contrast yet. Uh, some parts do, but some parts really look too too solid in my specular map. The color specular on the fuel tank is working. It's slightly yellow, I like that. The engine okay, but mm, I could do with some more contrast if you ask me. Also, may maybe you noticed when I created the specular map is I use my ambient occlusion in my specular map. Some people are against this, but I think I, th I think there's no reason not to because ambient occlusion represents uh, how much light an area, uh, how much light an area would, uh, would reach into an area. So if there's less light, there will be less specular. Hence, um, I include it in my specular map. So I'm just looking around. Um, I'm thinking, oh, I'm not there yet. Um, this definitely needs some more work. It's the first steps towards texturing, and uh, I'm by far not done with this uh, with this texture yet. Especially, it needs more contrast. I'm missing some details, obviously, but but the engine. I think the engine is really like the showpiece of the car, and uh, I'm not exactly nailing it yet. And the reason I'm looking at it from all these crazy angles is just because I want the uh, the light to fall onto the surface and I want to see the speculars. I'm changing the glosses a little bit, see if that matters. 30, I'm not finding the correct value yet. So many different metals that I can't really nail it with one value yet. Yeah, I'm rotating my, my model a little bit to catch even more speculars. I'm just trying to trying to see, I'm really thinking a lot here. I'm trying to see what, um, how I could try to improve this. Um, and I'll be honest, I had a little bit of a, I said a little bit of a mental block. I felt like um, it's not really progressing as much as I'd like. So I'm going to go online and look for some uh, some reference well uh, here's something I'm gonna do just because it's fun and it's easy I'm gonna put on um, put on a break disc texture I, I go to CG cars because I know they have some really nice break disc textures you get these these circular scores in there uh, which I think is pretty cool It seems like it's really difficult to select, so I'm just using Alt, uh, Alt drag, and then I hit Shift after I started dragging, so it becomes round. I'm scaling this down. So, recap again. I had a little bit of trouble with getting the engine right, so I've decided to move on a little bit to more uh, satisfying and rewarding areas, like the. Uh, like the brake disc, which I know will work out. They're not that difficult. Brake disc one. I'm gonna set that to blend mode. Uh, let's see screen. Ah, overlay. Overlay should be okay. Well, normal so also good. Let me just increase the brightness and the contrast. I want to make sure that the the circular scores are really visible in there. So then I duplicate that for the other half of the brake disc and then I have these and I duplicate them into the normals why? well because uh, I want the the circular scores to also be visible on the normal map filling the rest with 
there we go. Set to overlay and reduce the opacity of that layer a little bit so it just doesn't become too obvious. So you can see while I get new ideas for my diffuse, I also change the normal map a little bit still. Works in both ways. You add stuff from your normal map until your diffuse and the other way around too. Yeah, I'm making the brightness and contrast really obvious so you get some, some really dark and light ridges in there. And that is looking pretty cool, right? Uh, see, this is a part which is more rewarding. I think this looks really nice. The normal maps are working. The speckler and diffuse are doing their job. Um, that was a fun part to work on. So anyway, that's uh, that's almost it for this video. Uh, I hope in the next video that um, we're going to be able to improve the, the metal on the engine a little bit more because it just looks too standard. I feel like my diffuse isn't doing enough here. Uh, so... That was it for this video, did a few more parts, and I'll see you in the next one.